Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Y'all, I've been thinking. Times are tough right now, right? And folks are broke. So I was thinking it would be a good time to talk about maybe a list of cheap or budget-friendly, diet-friendly, Weight Watchers-friendly snacks that we can keep around the house to help keep us on track with our diets and not break our budgets. What do you think? So y'all go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell to keep up with the shenanigans. I'll get us set up and we can talk about some snacks. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The fact that, well, we're not in a room, we're sitting outside. So there's a couple of reasons behind this. First of all, y'all like full on hippie style, I've decided that I'm gonna start grounding. Have y'all ever heard about this? So there's this theory and it goes back like till forever that the root of a lot of our health problems is the fact that we're like disconnected from the earth, right? That like earth has for lack of a better term, Earth has a magnetic charge and our bodies have an electrical charge, right? And the Earth kind of charges our bodies. Well, when we wear like rubber soled shoes and we live in houses that are disconnected from the Earth and we never walk like barefoot on the Earth or we don't wear leather soled shoes that allow that sort of current to travel from the Earth into our bodies anymore, it disconnects us from that like charge that the Earth has. And I know y'all are thinking she has lost her mind. She's gone all hippity dippity. That's okay. You can think that because <laughs> that's what I thought too. When my friend Dave, who is having some health issues called me and he's like, hey, what do you know about this? And my first thought was that's some hippity dippity stuff right there. And he said that he had seen a show on it. And he's like, do me a favor, just do some, like, do some reading, see what you see and see what you think. So I did some reading and y'all, there might be something to this. And I know a bunch of y'all are like, who doesn't know about that? I know, but a lot of people don't know about it. And a lot of people think that it's hokum and maybe it is hokum, but I'm gonna try it y'all. Cause I am tired of my legs hurting. I'm tired of my knees hurting, I'm tired of my ankles hurting. And I know I'm old and old folks get like creaky and cranky and stuff happens to them. But I'm like, you know what? If sitting my feet in the grass for like 30 minutes a day or something is gonna make that feel better, I'm gonna try it. And I know you're like, dude, you live in Minnesota. You can only see grass for like four months a year. They make stuff for that. And yes, I fell for some advertisements on the interweb. So I read some, I actually read a couple of studies from the NIH about how in double blind studies, they actually found that people that did like grounding or earthing, which is literally just like having your body in contact with the earth or with water, like apparently water is like supercharged grounding, that it had positive effects on people's physical well being. So I was like, I'm gonna try that. And you can buy mats, like you can have a mat in your house and set your feet on it, and that will ground you. I might need to go inside and get a. Um, get a wind thing for my microphone because I'm gonna tell y'all in a minute why we are banished to the outside. But anyway, you can get a mat to set your feet on to ground you or you can wear like grounding socks or there are grounding sheets that you can sleep on. So there's all kinds of sort of artificial ways to get this natural thing from the earth. But y'all, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna let y'all know how it goes. So anyway, I, th I was thinking I needed to get my grounding in for the day and I wanted to talk to my friends and y'all, the intern bless his heart is homesick. He's been homesick for like four to, all right, hang on. I'm gonna go get a wind, wind uh, dead cat for my microphone. I'll be right back. Sorry y'all, I was looking at my monitor and it looked like the wind wasn't picking up on like my sound monitor, but I was like the instant I ignore it and don't do anything about it and just act like it's not gonna pick up, my whole thing is gonna sound like whoosh, and it's gonna make me mad when I'm editing. So anyway, was, oh yeah, the intern, y'all, bless his heart. The intern is homesick. He's been homesick for four days, which like he can't stand to sit on the couch for like two hours on any given day. And he's been on the couch for like four days. So we are banished to the outside. <laughs> he's like, well, I can go in my office so you can shoot your video. I was like, no, honey, you sit on the couch. Well, we can go outside and talk. So here's the plan is I have notes on my little, y'all, how cute is this? My little nomad my um, Super Note A6X, my Nomad. So I have notes on here. So I'm gonna talk to y'all about 
some snacks we can keep around the house and I'll, I'll editing early in the morning editing Danielle will just have to pop up pictures for you and y'all we'll just do the best we can because I really don't want to disturb the intern I want him to rest so let's talk about some things that we can keep around the house that are either diet no not they're all gonna be diet friendly that are either budget friendly so they're not very expensive or even if it's something that's a little bit expensive, we'll talk about something that's like less expensive that you can put with it so that it'll help out with your budget. Cause y'all times are tough right now, right? And I was thinking the other day that like, it's just hard. Like it's hard to buy all of these expensive, like low point or no point or whatever foods. Remember, I don't remember what it was that I made, but I made something on a video that was like, I mean, it wasn't real sketchy, but it was kind of like, mm, I don't really love this, but I told y'all, I was like, I'm gonna eat this anyway, cause stuff's expensive. And I was only halfway kidding, like I did eat it anyway. Cause I'm not one, I don't like to waste food, but I'm not gonna waste food now cause stuff's expensive. So let's talk about what kind of things can we keep around the house or like, can we think about to eat for snacks that maybe we wouldn't normally like necessarily think about for snacks or to put together and y'all know one of our a number one things to keep around that I think I even forgot to talk about in my last video is eggs now the price of eggs has gone up significantly over the past few years but so has everything else so compared to other things eggs I think are still a good like cost effective option for a snack you can do boiled eggs you can do, we've talked about making deviled eggs, right? So like everybody knows how to make a deviled egg, right? You just cut the egg in half, mush the yolk up, but instead of mushing it up with mayonnaise, mush it up with our zero point ranch dip, little bit of mustard, scoop it back in your egg. And now you've got a more filling, still zero point egg snack option. And y'all, you can also do like, if you're hungry, like hungry, eat you an egg sandwich for a snack or make, we, how many times do we have to talk about these? Those egg muffins, and y'all, I'm still not real, real sure what to call them. Um, egg muffins, egg cupcakes, egg whatevers, but mix up your eggs, pour them into cupcake holders with whatever kind of things you have to go in them. If you've got vegetables, cut you up some broccoli. I bet spinach would be, not spinach, no, spinach probably would be good in there. How about this? Anything you would put in a quiche, put in one of those. So you can do ham. We did one with bacon one time that was so, so good. And y'all, one like stick of bacon, one slab, one piece of bacon, whatever like a thing of bacon is. I have my legs crossed and my feet aren't on the ground and I am not grounding. Um, <laughs> That's a challenge for me is keeping both feet on the floor whilst I'm trying to ground. Anyway, um, bacon, like one thing of actual real live bacon is only one point. So if you do bacon in one of those, how about bacon, broccoli, and fat free cheddar cheese in one of your egg muffin cup things, pour in some egg. So get you a cupcake tin, right? Whip you up some eggs put different fillings in your different cupcake cups, fill it up with eggs, bake it at 350 until they're done. And y'all mine go like 25 minutes because you don't wanna, like when you go to eat that later, you don't wanna bite into it and it's all like mushy, eggy in the middle, but they keep well in the fridge, they keep well in the freezer. So you don't have to worry about them spoiling. If you, if you make like 12 of them, you're like, this can take me a little while to eat these, freeze some of them. So that's a great way to keep eggs around and sort of a like ready to go, ready to eat form, I guess, for when you're hungry and ready for a snack. So eggs, what about chickpeas? Y'all, we talk about chickpeas all the time. Chickpeas are dirt cheap. So you can make hummus. You can do, we did this before. <laughs> Remember I tested this on the intern. So take your chickpeas, dry them, throw them in the basket of your air fryer and just, just like air fryer them until they're crispy. Remember I put them in a, the intern will not eat a chickpea any more than the man in the moon, but I just put them in a bowl and left them sit on the counter. And he's like, what are these? I was like, oh, just little crispy bits. And he ate them and liked them, even though he cannot stand a chickpea. So toast you up some chickpeas and those are good little, just like crispy snacky bits. And I think a can of chickpeas 
is like 62 cents or something at the Walmart. So chickpeas are great like that. Hummus is a great snack now. I don't know how much tahini costs because I've had my jar of tahini for evers, but that might be a little bit expensive, a jar of tahini, but I use maybe what, a tablespoon, two tablespoons of tahini when I make hummus. So that's, so for my hummus, I do chickpeas, tahini, and then either sun-dried tomatoes or the roasted uh, red bell peppers or whatever kind of bell peppers. That's all that goes in my hummus. And then that'll last me like a week or two. Like if I do two cans, that's like a week and a half. Use that to dip your veggies in. So that's a really quick, really cheap snack. Or chocolate hummus. Now, the chocolate hummus, of course, is a little bit more expensive to make because I use real cocoa and I use monk fruit sweetener, but y'all look, monk fruit sweetener is expensive. It's um, about $9.72 for that like container that I buy. It's worth it to me because not to have to worry about like any other kind of sweetener. I know that I like it. I know that if I make something with that monk fruit sweetener, I mean, I might not like what I make, but I'm not going to dislike it because of the taste of the sweetener. So I'm not like taking on that risk. So to me, it's worth the cost, cost of the monk fruit sweetener, but you can buy a different zero calorie sweetener or y'all seriously, you can just use sugar. Like if it comes down to making your budget or not making your budget, buy some dang sugar. So anyway, so in my chocolate hummus, I do chickpeas, cocoa, like the, um, I, I just buy like the big thing of Hershey's cocoa at the Walmart and um, sweetener and whatever kind of milk you use. So I use almond milk, whatever milk you got around the house, that's all that goes into my chocolate hummus. And y'all, that's a really good dessert. So again, even if it's a little bit expensive because of the cocoa in it, it's, you're not buying, like if you're eating that for dessert, you're not buying ice cream, you're not buying popsicles, pudding, like don't let me sit here and list off all the desserts that I wanna eat, but comparison, like the comparison of the cost of that to other things that you might be buying, I think you're probably gonna find that it's a more economical choice, especially if you're trying to buy the low calorie dessert options. So think about hummus because y'all chickpeas are dirt cheap. Cottage cheese, y'all know our love for cottage cheese. So we did cottage cheese bowls, which are so filling. Y'all, I forget how filling those are <laughs> last night or day before yesterday. I made a cottage cheese bowl with, I was just gonna do, uh, well, I started off thinking, oh, I want some imitation crab meat. So I was gonna do cottage cheese, imitation crab meat, and a little something else in there. So I peeled two boiled eggs, threw those in there. And then I was like, oh, I have half an avocado that's about to go not so nice. So I cut that up, put that in there. Holy Moses, was that filling? Threw in some everything but the bagel seasoning. Yum, but cottage, so cottage cheese bowls, fantastic snack. Y'all just be aware of how filling they are. So, um, and cottage cheese with fruit. So sometimes to me, apples can be a little bit expensive, maybe because I'm an apple snob, but, and I know that like often you can find different types of apples at like your local store on sale. I like certain kinds of apples. So again, for me, it's worth it for that little bit of extra cost for the certain kind of apples that I like. But an apple with some cottage cheese, cottage cheese, so it doesn't bring down the cost of the apple, but it makes that snack more filling. So it does make it kind of more cost effective. So cottage cheese with fruit, y'all know how much I love cottage cheese with a can of no sugar added fruit. So good, so filling, so zero points for the no sugar added fruit. If you get fat free cottage cheese, then that's obviously no points. Even the 1% or 2%, like the intern bought me the 2% cottage cheese because he got it at the Sam's and he got like the big old bucket of it. So I'm gonna be working on that for a little while, but it was cheaper because it was the big old bucket from the Sam's Club. So I'll just count those points and eat it with like fruit or something so that I'm not adding any points to it. So cottage cheese is a great option. Along those same lines, y'all know my thoughts about the yogurts. Now, we've talked before about those little Oikos, um, zero, zero, no, trip, I almost said zero, zero, zero. What? 
Oikos. Apparently the grounding is not going to my brain and making me smarter. Oikos Triple Zero yogurts. Now the name brand Oikos ones, those might be a little spendy for you. I mean, they might be a little spendy for me. The intern gets them for me in like the big boxes at Sam's and it's just easy for me to have him get that. And then I have, I think it's like 12 of them. I just stick them in the fridge and eat them till they're gone. But your, I know that Walmart carries a Walmart brand of them. The Oikos ones are two points each. The Walmart ones, you have to be a little bit careful with the flavors because I think the vanilla Walmart one is a little bit more pointage and some of the other ones might be a little more pointage as well. But for me, I like having that single serving size because I work early, early in the morning some days and y'all, I just can't. Like I cannot with the measuring and the scooping out and the mixing and the things, I just grab that thing, throw it in my mouth, especially when I need to eat something so I can take some Advil because my leg is hurting. So it's worth it to me to keep those around. And I don't, so the neighbor behind us was like, I don't know, leaf blowing or something. He finally stopped that and now my house is like blowing itself. I don't know what's happening anyway. Sorry about that noise, but it's worth it for me to keep those single size Oikos yogurts around because they're easy to grab in the morning and there's no waste. Like I know I'm gonna eat every bit of that little thing and be done with it. And I'm not gonna like leave four spoonfuls in the bottom of the bowl and waste that. So that's worth it for me. And if, I, if the intern wasn't buying the big boxes of them at the Sam's Club, I would absolutely buy the Walmart brand ones. I've had the Walmart brand ones and I like those just as well. It's just that the intern buys the big ones so I just get the big ones. So yogurt. Also, of course, our big tubs of fat-free plain Greek yogurt that we then mix with frozen fruit because frozen fruit's cheaper than fresh fruit. We thaw out frozen fruit, mix it with our Greek yogurt, yum. Or we've talked about this before, in the middle of the day, if you're hungry, like hungry, hungry, and you want a good snack, go ahead and eat you some overnight oats. I keep overnight oats in my fridge. So if I'm really hungry in the middle of the day and I just, I know that things are gonna go all pear-shaped if I don't make like a serious choice, I'll just eat some fat free plain Greek yogurt with my overnight oats and my fruit, have a big old snack and be done. And I know that the big thing of plain Greek yogurt from Walmart is like $3.34, I think. And y'all, I go through a lot of those a week, but like a normal person, I think could probably make it a week or so on one of those. So, but I eat a, lo a, a lot of Greek yogurt. So Greek yogurt, I think is a, or any kind of yogurt, but Greek yogurt specifically, I think is a great option because of the higher protein count in it. I think it's a great option for a snack and you can find some great deals on yogurt. So yogurt's a really good snack. Edamame. I love me some edamame. I'm not sure what the cost is right now, but I used to could get a bag of frozen edamame at Walmart for like a dollar. My Walmart hasn't been carrying it lately, so I don't know if like Walmarts don't carry it anymore, but that is a great snack. Y'all, those are just little like the soybean pods that you get at the Japanese restaurant like before your food comes. So good, so filling, so zero points. So that's a great snack if you can find it. Like I said, my Walmart used to have the bags of them for a dollar, so I would eat just a whole bag of it. I know, but it was filling and it was zero points. So edamame is a great snack to keep around if you can find it. Nuts are another good snack. They're a great source of protein and they're good. It's, those are healthy fats, right? Y'all, I'm the worst with healthy fats. I've told y'all before, when I go to the doctor and like get the blood test and have all the things like checked, that's the one thing that I, I don't get in trouble for, but my doctor's always like, everything's great, but your, is it ADL, LD, whatever the letters are, like my good fats are always low and nuts have good fats. I think avocados have good fats, right? So my good fats should be better now because I've been eating a lot of, I know nobody asked, but I've been eating a lot of avocados. Anyway, back to nuts. Nuts are a good source of protein, good source of fat. Now they can be spendy. I totally understand that. But if you take you a handful of nuts, like as we know, nine almonds is one point, right? So so we get our nine almonds and put them in the little like those little Ziploc bag. They're not Ziploc. They're like the Walmart version of the Ziploc bag you can get. Put your nine almonds in there. So you grab a little 
nine almond snack pack, eat those nine almonds with some yogurt or some cottage cheese, y'all. I'm not even kidding you when I say I will sit down with a bowl of cottage cheese, nine almonds and like an apple or something and I will be happy as a lark. So nuts are a great snack option and even if they're expensive, you can pair them with, or I guess that's not a pair because that was three things, but you can combine them with other things that make nuts still sort of a cost-effective snack so that you can still have nuts if you like them and not break your budget. I mentioned veggies already. <laughs> the sun's coming out from behind clouds. Y'all, I'm just being tortured out here. Veggies are a fantastic option for a snack. We talked about dipping veggies in hummus. You can also do, I mean, just plain old veggies, right? But you can do like carrots, celery, cucumbers, tomatoes, any of those dipped in hummus, dipped in fat-free ranch dip for a fantastic snack. Fruit is also a great snack. And if you can get fruit on sale, that's like double bonus. So fruit, veggies with hummus. We've already talked about hummus, so we're not gonna go back there, but keep you some hummus around to eat with those fruits or veggies to bulk up your snack and keep them budget friendly. And y'all don't forget fruit. You can get fresh fruit, frozen fruit, canned fruit, applesauce, is fruit, right? You gotta get the unsweetened applesauce. So the applesauce that doesn't have added sugar, but that's zero points. And I know that the Walmart, I'm not gonna guess, I think, I kinda think I know how much the big bucket of Walmart applesauce costs, but I'm not gonna say it cause then I'll be wrong, but it's very cost effective. So check out, now the little things applesauce obviously are like more expensive cause they're easier, but check out the big buckets of applesauce. Those are a great snack option. This is gonna sound a little crazy, but oatmeal, oatmeal, believe it or not, is a great snack option. It's cheap, it's healthy, so we should be eating it anyway, and it's easy. Now, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I'm more of a grits than an oatmeal girl, y'all know this. But, I mean, grits are good too. Grits are a great option as well. They're not even on my list. Grits are a great option. But these, I feel like, are things that you don't necessarily think of as a snack, but if you're hungry, Grab you a bowl of grits, throw you some scrambled eggs in there. Okay, now that's a meal, not a snack, but <laughs> I'm all off kilter. Um, so uh, let's go back to oatmeal. Oatmeal is a great snack and you can make protein balls, which y'all, I've been toying with this idea. We should try those one day, not today, but we should try, we should make protein balls one day, just see what we come up with. So often it's simply some kind of oats, some kind of nut butter, and then something like maybe dates or something else mixed in for sweetness. So I, I gotta work my way through it, but maybe we'll try those one day. But yeah, protein balls made with oats, with oatmeal is a great option for a snack. And again, oatmeal y'all dirt cheap. Remember that big old box of oatmeal that I got at the Sam's Club? So you can get big things of oats for not like a whole lot of money. So those are a great budget friendly option for snacks. I know y'all are like, how has she not talked about popcorn? My fave, it was actually the top of my list, but I was like, I'm not gonna say popcorn first cause they're all like, she's gonna say popcorn first. I didn't, but look, it's, can y'all see it? It's first on my list. Popcorn, number one in my heart. Popcorn is, you, now, I'm a little bougie about my popcorn. I buy Orville Redenbacher, which I think is probably a little overpriced, but it's what my daddy had when we were kids. That's, to me, that's popcorn. So I'm an Orville Redenbacher's girl. You can get less expensive brands of popcorn. You can get like big old buckets of popcorn for cheap, cheap. And it's zero points. Throw it in a like microwave popcorn popper, pop you some popcorn. If you don't wanna be fancy, y'all throw it in a paper bag. I mean, you can't do it in like a Kroger bag, like a plastic bag. But remember those like, those paper bags, I'm doing like this, like you know what I'm saying, like I can see it in my head. But those paper lunch bags we had when we were kids, throw you some popcorn in there, roll down the top, throw it in the microwave oven, it'll pop right up. So you don't have to have the fancy <laughs> popcorn popper like my $9 popcorn popper from the Walmart. But yeah, popcorn is a fantastic option. Now I have a couple of more and then y'all, you can't see this, but I think it's getting, yeah, it's becoming overcast. So I should go inside or y'all are gonna watch me get dumped on. So a couple more, pinwheels. You can make like turkey or ham pinwheels. Just take you either like some kind of tortilla, like you know what would be really good is those tomato and herb 
carb-friendly torts that we buy, take one of those. Put you some, a little bit of spread on it. I, of course, would use my zero point ranch dip spread. Put some spread on it. Put you some turkey or ham. Put a little veg in it, maybe some lettuce, a little bit of tomato, roll it up, and then cut it this way so that you have pinwheels. Those would be so good. Great snack, super cheap. You could do those, you could do them with turkey or ham. Those would be really delish. Or, y'all, we haven't even talked about canned meat. And I know it sounds like canned meat sounds gross, but you can get lots of really good meat in the can now. Y'all know how I love chicken in a can. You can do canned chicken, canned tuna, there's canned salmon. I used to eat sardines. I don't know why. I don't eat sardines now, but there are lots of protein options that you can buy in a can that are very, very cost effective. You can, here's what you can do. I mean, obviously you can like make them into a salad and just eat them on a sandwich. Or, let's go back to our veg, you can have, what if you made a tuna salad or a chicken salad with some chicken in the can? And y'all know, we've talked about this 42 times. Take you a cucumber and slice it on the diagonal, right? Not like the long way, but just sort of like the cucumbers this way. Slice it kind of diagonal so you have big cucumber slices and put you some of that salad, either tuna salad or chicken salad on that. So cute, great snack. Or if you don't want to be all fancy, just get you some tuna, cut you up some cucumber, throw it in there, eat that. Or tomato or carrot, whatever veg you have, eat that with the salad that you've made from whatever meat in a can you have. Y'all, it's so good. I seriously love chicken in a can. Y'all know I will eat chicken straight out of the can, <laughs> depending on how hungry I am and how much I do or don't feel like fussing with something. So now chicken, like per ounce, chicken is going to, unless you get a good sale, chicken is gonna be more expensive than tuna but it's chicken and you can use, we're not talking meals right now, we're talking snacks, but you can use chicken in a can, like the canned chicken to make lots of actual like dishes, which I know you can tuna too, but that's not what I'm talking about. So I think chicken in a can is a really good budget friendly option to keep around the house. So y'all, I think, hang on, let me check my list. Yeah, cause the last thing I have is protein balls and we talked about that with oatmeal. So, that's it. I really kind of like, did y'all even see, did y'all even see my cute little nomad when I was checking my list? That's it. That's my whole list. So I tell you what, y'all, I'm going to, I'm going to end my grounding session for now. I'm going to go inside and do some yoga and stretch out. And then I might cook something, but in order to do that, I have to chase the intern off the couch or at least turn off the TV because I can't have that in the background because I'll probably catch a copyright strike. So I'm gonna have to chase him out of there so I can do my yoga. And then depending on how things go, we might or might not get in the kitchen. So let's go do some yoga and then we'll decide after that what we're gonna do, all right? So I'll see you guys inside. I've climbed the mountains in Montana Danced in the lights of New Orleans Portland ran away with me And San Francisco stayed with me Nashville made its way in between Fell in love in Minnesota and Fell apart south of Salt Lake Colorado calls to me And Washington will always be Begging for a piece of me to stay Maybe some things never change But I wanna know how it feels To hang pictures on a wall Coast. Climb the trees of Canada. 
All right, y'all, now that I'm all stretchy and bendy and flexible, I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye to y'all from here so that the intern can reclaim the couch and get some rest. So do me a favor, let us know in the comments, what are your favorite budget-friendly diet snacks to keep around the house? I know we talked about a bunch, but I'm absolutely certain that I missed a few. So let us know in the comments. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we are most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with this shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos at the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.